welcome everyone, I'm The Depressed Eeyore, and this is Sword of the Stars, The Pit. So, as the name implies, this is um, a game based off the Sword of the Stars uh, lore and setting. Um, I don't really know much about Sword of the Stars. I think I actually have an anime of it, but I don't know if that's the same Sword of the Stars as the Sword of the Stars that um, is uh, a bunch of RTSs. Well, not a bunch, I think there's only two with a bunch of expansions. and. Um, from what I've heard of those games, they start out rather buggy and, and um, barely functional, if that, and then they eventually get patched enough to be either reasonable or rather good games, but um, besides that, I don't know anything about it. This is not an RTS, though. This is a roguelike, so we're going to be messing around with that. I apologize if the sound's a little loud. I've been trying to adjust it. Um, we're not going to do the tutorial. In fact, I haven't even bothered to do the tutorial at all. Um, this game has a sort of a Dungeons and Dreadmorphed feel to it, but it's a little less humorous. Well, actually, it's a lot less humorous. And it has a little bit more lore to it, though I have yet to really see much of the lore. Um, I don't know how true, th true to the series it is. Um, like I said, I've only seen the anime, and I don't think the anime is the same sort of the stars as this uh, setting. Because there wasn't really that much variety in races as far as I knew from that. Anyway, new game. Yes, I'll race previous. Um, you only get one safe slot, so keep that in mind. If you die, you die permanently. Um, I believe in Dungeons & Dreadmore I went with like the hardest difficulty. I'm just going to stick with normal. The game is pretty difficult as is, even on normal. And in this game, rather than picking a bunch of skills and kind of making a custom character, um, you get the choice of three characters. Um, each of these characters are their own specific class and they have their own little backstory, which is kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and go through the list. Um, Yet, Timba Mabel is a ground forces engineer assigned to help build colonial infrastructure on Arbuta 4. He is very good with tech and excels at crafting, computers, and electronics. He has high brains and good finesse, but low might, which will limit how much equipment and loot he can carry. Um, his starting equipment, each character starts with their own set of equipment. He starts out with a knife, pistol, um, some rations, a med kit. The med kit's pretty oh, actually, I think they all start with med kit. You got some anti-venom, you got a jumpsuit. You get uh, toolkits, uh, do, 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 motion sensors, stuff like that. Uh, the main thing he gets to start out with, though, is like the uh, sharpening kit and a repair kit and the motion sensor, which means he can pretty much repair his stuff, and also he can detect monsters from further distance by using the motion uh, the mo motion sensor. Bad part is all he's got is a knife and a pistol, and he's not really good at. Um, he actually has the lowest combat skills. But he starts out with really high, as you can see down here, you got stats. Uh, there are three uh, stats. You pretty much got strength, dexterity, and intelligence. I honestly don't really know what they do. I think it's kind of like in, um, what am I thinking? Elder Scrolls, you know, um, Morrowind and uh, Oblivion, uh, where you, uh, the higher you have in a stat, it increases all the skills involved with that stat. So I think that's how it works. Also, some equipment and items uh, require have certain status requirements, like guns have certain finesse requirements, while certain uh, melee weapons have might requirements. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, besides that, uh, most of your focus is going to be on the skills. Um, you got computer, which is, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's allowing you to work with computers, electronics, you got mechanical, medical, traps, pistols, biotech, decipher. There's actually more skills than that. Um, it's just showing his highest skills. So he goes all the way from 15 in rifles all the way to computer, which is up to 55. Anyway, sorry about that. That was a little rambly. Mm -hmm. Marine. Travis Hudson was honorably discharged after the second battle of M Majolner? Or is that... Yeah, I think it's Majolner. Or Majolnir. He chose to retire on the rough frontier world of Arbuta IV. While building his cabin in the Feldbar Feldspar Mountains, he met and fell in love with Sumiko Hoshinara, a beautiful young scientist. As a former Marine, Hudson has high might and average finesse, but he might be a few marbles short in the brains department. His combat skills are still uh, sharp. He starts out with a blade, which is a, a lot better than a knife. Well, actually, it's, yeah, it's probably a lot more better than a knife. You got an auto pistol, which uh, allows you to fire multiple shots. He also starts out with an assault rifle. Um, he's also got, uh, he's got, he actually starts out with a high explosive grenade, which does a lot of damage. He's also got breaching charges, which allow him to blow open doors. He also actually blow open doors with uh, other weapons as well. Um, he's got actual armor. Um, seems to start out with a little bit more healing stuff, just so he can, you know, 
fight. He starts out with the highest might, uh, only, and the rest of his stats are pretty average, or actually below average. Um, but he has skills in assault weapons, rifle. He's actually the only person that starts out with like 55 assault weapon. So look at this. He's yeah, look at this. He's good with practically every type of weapon. And I think he has access to. I think each character has access to skills that other uh, characters do not get access to. Because I've never seen heavy weapon before. At least when I played as the scout. So she. Uh, wait a minute. Fell in love with. Oh okay. Oh I see. Toshiko uh, Hoshinara is a bat pilot in the Soul Force Scout Corps. Her twin sister, Tomiko, disappeared while doing classified research on Arbuta 4. As a trained scout, Toshiko is fast and has high finesse, good brains, and average might. She has light combat skills and some basic training in tech and medical uh, skills. So she starts out with an auto pistol. Uh, the main benef benefit of the auto pistol is it fires two, shot, two shots every time you uh, take an action with it. Uh, the bad part is it takes two shots every time you use it. So even if you one shot a monster, you still waste two bullets. Starts out with a better knife, I think. Let's take a look. Yeah, she starts out with a Dura knife, which is a stronger form of a knife. Um, she starts out with stun grenades, uh, frag grenades. She doesn't actually start out with that much compared to the other characters, but um, she has a lot of pistol rounds. Um, she has the highest finesse, average brains, low might, but um, she can uh, use pistols rather well. She's kind of average with rifles, and she's kind of good with uh, pretty much everything else. She's kind of average, or slightly below average. Uh, the main other thing that's uh, different between each of the classes is how they level up. Um, scouts get only one stat point to spend on these three stats every level, but they get eight skill points. Uh, engineers get two stat points, and I think... Oh, I don't even remember how many skill points. And the Marine gets three staff points and probably gets the least amount of skills. So the Marine starts out with a lot of good combat skills, but you can't really develop them uh, through level up as quickly. Anyway, we're going to go with the Scout because, well, I like skill points. And um, I think man, I think she does rather well overall. So we're going to go stick with that. Okay. Huh. I never used melee before, to be honest. I think melee is kind of like a general skill, and then knife is like a specific weapon. To do that, or you have to be using your fist. I'm not entirely certain. Okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and click next. And here we are. So you can probably tell it kind of has a Dungeon of Dreadmore look to it. Uh, you can move around. Rather than having like a usual fog of war, you have a more of like a cone shape uh, view, which is pretty good. And uh, you got your skills here. Uh, you get your stats. Uh, if you look at all the skills, you can see t the symbol matches whatever stat it's uh, assigned to. Um, one other thing to note: you, you have radiation in this, and you have food. Um, you do run, you do have to keep uh, you do have to eat food in this, which is kind of nice. Um, a lot of uh, old school rule uh, had this thing about you always eating food and stuff, and it kind of forced you to constantly progress because you eventually reach a point where you can't get any more food on the floor, so you can't just grind it for levels. And uh, this is kind of the same way, though I don't think monsters just randomly spawn in this. I think they're all set upon entering. Anyway, uh, some of these skills I still have no idea what they do. Um, this is literally like my second playthrough. I played one playthrough, got to like level 9, and uh, eventually died. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of a learning experience. Uh, we have 50 health, blue bars uh, food, uh, red bars health, and uh, yeah. If you also look in our inventory, we have kind of an old school Diablo-esque type of inventory, or you can or Dungeon Siege inventory, depending on what sort of game you prefer. Uh, we start out with the Flak jacket, which gives us 50 armor. We got an auto pistol, which fires two shots and has eight damage and 50 penetration. I don't know what penetration is. Um, we also have a Dura knife, which is um, I can equip it. Oh, okay, I see now. I was always concerned about the um, red te text here, like you can see that durability is less. I, at first I thought it was because my weapon was getting damaged, but it's actually because it's just comparing it to your currently equipped item. Okay, that's good to know. I understand now. Anyway, uh, the Dura Knife, 5 damage, 30 per, uh, penetration, you can only attack once per turn, or per action. Uh, we got a Terran Medkit. Uh, Terran Medkit has uh, charges. These green bars are charges. Every charge, you get a chance to use your medical skill to heal yourself. If you fail the check, you waste a charge. If you succeed, you heal yourself. Um, I think also, like, the higher you roll and the something, you'll probably get more health. Um, you got a lockpick set. Uh, it has five charges as well. 
when you lockpick, you can choose to use the lockpick set, that, uh, set to increase your chances of picking a lock. Uh, we got frag grenades, which do uh, high damage. Uh, then we got stun grenades that do less damage, but do like stunning effects. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Anyway, that's about the gist of it. So that's what we start out with. Let's get this started. And just like Dungeons and Dread more, every step is a turn. If you look up here, you see my time's going down a little bit. Ah, and there's our first enemy. Now, the way it works uh, for fighting is you actually hit the F key, and it will attack whatever's closest to you. But you can also use the arrow keys to kind of set your target like this. That way you can uh, specifically target whatever enemy you want. So if someone, if like a weak monster runs in front of a strong monster, you're not stuck just attacking a weak monster while the strong one beats the tar out of you. Anyway, attack. Yeah, you might notice that everything's in doubles, or has decimals for damage and health and healing and all that fun stuff. So enjoy that. Alright. That sound is usually the sound you get when you level up, but since we start at zero experience, it's just, it's nothing. Anyway, um, you might notice it said Duro Knife took damage. Uh, what that means is my durability went down uh, a point. Yeah. Yeah, durability went down a point. So every time you see something that says armor or weapon damage or something, that means you lost a durability point. It's kind of random, so uh, keep that in mind. Um, rock piles. If you hit spacebar with stuff like you can interact with, you can um, do things like search this rock pile, which is based off your foraging skill, and you have a 74% chance of success. So we're going to go ahead and use that. It does take time, takes turns to do this. And yes, there's a little bit of voice acting in this. Um, so we we got we searched the rock pile, we succeeded, we got a food pellet. We grabbed the food pellet. Food pellet is just for food. Um, you also get experience for doing these things. Um, you generally get experience for killing and using skills. So Also you might notice it said our foraging increased. So if we go here, our foraging is now 31 instead of 30. So not only can you get skills by leveling up, but you the more you use skills, the more it increases. It's very similar to like the... Um, Elder Scroll series. Ooh, nice shot. Anyway, let's keep going. Also, we do have a map and some other things. We also have this thing. Oh, okay, that's cool. So, some of the stuff that, um... Oh, well, this, I wish I knew about this earlier. So yeah, if you go here, you can actually check your logs, and yeah, you can see all your logs, see all that, you can see all your rewards, which is all your achievements. I actually didn't check this earlier, and I was kind of annoyed, because if you hit escape, your only options is to exit or return to game, and I was trying to figure out where the freaking options menu was, so I can look up what key does what, but you can do that by clicking on this little Game Boy over here, and uh, just click Game Boy Play and all that, so good stuff there, and it keeps track of everything you found. Um, even on your other character. So on my previous character, I found things like laser pistols, and uh, we got a rifle here, stuff like that, and all these items I found. There's lots of items in this game. There's crafting, good stuff like that, and there's messages, and you can decrypt messages as well. Uh, what's this do? Oh, it deletes it. Ooh, don't want to do that. Okay, note to self, don't do that. Um, there's a bunch of messages you can find in this game, and you have to use your decrypt, your decrypt skill to try to de uh, decrypt the uh, the language. And but if you succeed, you can read what it is. Um, if you fail, if you only get a partial success, though, you can only see bits and pieces of the word or the uh, message. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, hello. Knife skill went up, and we're just gonna go. some stuff, bindings, that's crafting stuff. Alright, 85% chance. Rock piles are generally easy to search through, and they're pretty much free experience and forge, so always search everything. I mean, the only reason you wouldn't search everything is if you're really running out of food. Uh, this is rotten cheese. If you eat things like rotten cheese, you'll pr there's a chance you'll get diseased or poisoned, and uh, disease and poison in this game can be kind of nasty, so be careful. So far I'm doing rather well, a lot better than I usually do, but it'll probably balance out eventually. Anyway, we'll keep searching. 
there are 30 floors in this game. So, now the floors aren't as big as Dungeons & Dreadmore, so don't worry too, worry too much about that. These things are uh, mut mutant rock rats. They have a chance of doing poison, so be careful about that. Um, you, if you're worried about poison, a good idea is to go ahead and use your ranged weapon. The reason I'm not using my ranged weapon is one, it lets me. I want to level up my um, knife skill so I can have a melee attack, a decent one. Also, we only have so much ammo, and every shot of the auto pistol uses two bullets. So. Also, every time you shoot your gun, there's a chance to lose durability, and I don't want my gun to break. Um, everything's random in this. Oh, found a trap. You can't dis as far as I can tell, you can't disarm traps. Um, also, um, some traps are actually good traps. They can heal you and stuff. Anyway. No, oh, got a scent plan. And you are a rabbit. I try to get the right one. Ooh, I leveled. Alright, so when you level, you hit C. You get back all your health when you level, which is kind of nice. You get a new max health. And we get, as a scout, we get one stat point, which I'm going to go ahead and put in brains. And we get eight skill points, which I'm going to go ahead and put in. Um, depending on your level, we'll decide what's, how many uh, points it costs to increase the skill. You can only increase the skill once per level. So in this case, uh, a lot of our stuff costs two, unfortunately. So that kind of sucks. We're gonna go ahead and keep. We're gonna go ahead and get started on electronics. Get that up a little bit. Um, we want to go ahead and also get uh, computer up. We want to cipher up, which is right here. And if I want to, I can work on forage, but I don't want to. And the other thing we want to work on is mechanical. I think. I'm thinking mechanical. Yeah, let's go ahead and work on mechanical. Um, when you increase the skill, you get anywhere from 1 to 3 points. It's completely random. Usually it's 1 for me, which kind of sucks. Anyway. Killed that. Now we're level 2. Let's get searching. Okay, got ourselves some raw meat. So, the stuff we've picked up so far, food pellets, binding, rotten cheese, risky to eat, scent glands. There's a lot of ingredients in this game. Unfortunately, you don't have any recipes uh, unless you find them. Or if you can either read a message that'll kind of tell you what the item is, or you can just do a lot of experimenting and hope for the best. Um, so far, the only thing I know of, well, I know of two, but I didn't really get a chance to craft one of them. Um, I know how to make improvised lockpicks, and I do know how to make cooked meat. And all it, all it takes to make cooked meat is you need to find some sort of cooker, like an oven, and just get some raw meat and put it on there. I also know how to make um, safe meat, which is just uh, raw meat that you make um, safe using a purifier. Anyway. If any food. Ah, a popular brand of super sterilized full course meals that are guaranteed to be edible for a, th a thousand years. This thing is a hundred food, which is not bad. Anyway, how are we looking on the map? So far we haven't found the stairs down yet. chance. And I failed it. I was bound to fail one of them. Why is it... Oh, there it is. So there's the stairs. For a second I was like, this is the last room. I better... I hope this is here. Anyway, nothing else to search for, so we're gonna go to the next floor. And holy cow, that's a lot of freaking rats. We're gonna fire our gun. I got stunned. There we go. Uh, reloading takes two actions, so keep that in mind. Oh, great, I'm diseased now. Okay, I have level one disease right now. There's chances that you don't fight... Two things will happen. I'll either fight off the disease, and I'll go down a level, in which case I'll just get removed. Or, it'll get worse, and I'll get sicker and sicker until I die. So, yeah, good times. I'm gonna go ahead and reload my pistol, since it's safe to do so. And 
forage. And hope the disease wears off. Yes. Alright. Uh, Fort skill went up. Got ourselves a purifier. Awesome. Purifier, biomechanical device capable of cleansing foods and of disease, poisons, and rot. Right click on the purifier to deactivate. Using the purifier takes energy, and so after our limited net uses, it will have to be recharged at a charging hub. So, this can be recharged. Um, and right now it has eight charges. Now, I think, despite the fact it can be recharged, if you use up the very last charge, I think the item disappears. Because that's what happened with a med kit that was rechargeable um, in my previous playthrough. So I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna use this until I only have one charge left. Anyway, this is a purifier, so we're gonna go ahead and use this to start crafting. And we're gonna craft. Uh, we're gonna take this raw meat, put it in here, craft. All right, computer skill increased, and we got ourselves a piece of meat safe to eat through the use of a purifier. So we got safe meat. And we also increased our computer skill with that, which is actually really good, because we need that. So let's go ahead and go do some more crafting. We're going to go ahead and see what happens if we put the rotten cheese in here. So I want to put that in there. Craft. Ah, safe cheese. Piece of sterilized cheese, safe to eat. Perfect. That actually increased my skill. Yep, increased my computer sp skill even more. So this is a really good item to find early on, so you can build up a computer skill. So I'll grab that safe cheese. And we're going to go ahead and use it one more time. Um, I'm not sure if you can do multiples at the same time. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of, actually, I think I understand how it works. If you, if you click like the pluses here on the menu, and you had multiple, if you had like a stack or something, it'll put in multiple slots. But if you click, if you press this button here, I think you can actually make it so you produce more than one item. I'm just gonna do things one at a time until I'm completely certain. Because if you screw up a, a recipe, you lose all the ingredients. So if I did, like one time I did cooked meat, where it's just one raw meat, and I put it in the oven, and I tried putting two raw meats in there, and I tried cooking it, and it failed, because it's not, exa it's not exactly the same recipe. So it, I lost two, piece two pieces of meat from it. Hopefully that came out clear. Hopefully. Anyway, let's get ourselves some more skill. Awesome. And we, got ex we get experience for crafting, by the way. So craft away in this game. Anyway, got some bindings, a poison gland. Ooh, and some more raw meat. So I want to go ahead and use this again. Crafting. 99% chance of success. And there is no 100% in this game. There's always a 1% chance that you can fail. I haven't failed a 99% yet, but I failed a 97... I believe I failed a 97 before. This, I think, is a trap. Yeah, there are door traps that are color-coded. So, um... And, yeah. That was a tr this red trap destroys uh, all random. It destroys a random item, so it destroyed all my. Uh, it destroyed all my cheese, which kind of sucks. And this is a white trap. Oh, and this trap uh, recharged my purifier, so it's back to full. So good stuff. All right, so we got ourselves a ammo crate down here. So I want to go ahead and grab it. Uh, of course, mechanical skill. This is prying open the crate. Luckily, it's pretty easy. And we got ourselves mechanical and foraging up. And we got ourselves some more bullets. Uh, this is a ruined locker. You can't do anything with it. Um, this is a locked door. Um, if you Now, in this case, I have a lockpick set. If I want to, I can increase my lockpicking to pretty much a lot. <laughs> it increases my lockpick skill to like 96, making it pretty much a sure thing. But I'm just going to use a no I'm not going to use lockpick because it's a one-use thing. Oh, well, I succeeded that, got my lock, pills, lock picking skill up, and I got attacked from behind. I knew there was a monster around. I didn't think it, sh it, it was ch coming after me just yet. Oh, hello, Snakey. Okay, now it's dead. So far, so good. Oh, hello. You know what? I'm just going to melee you. Awesome. The uh, robot, these, uh, can't highlight it, oh, but these, like, little repair robots that kind of go around, they have a chance, they have a pretty high chance of break, uh, damaging armor when you get hit by them, so it might be a good idea to fight them from a distance. What are these things called? Maintenance bots. Yes. So, I'm gonna go ahead and use a gun here. Got 
more traps. That's a purple one. I don't know what purple does. And it's a speed debuff, so now I go slower for 30 or so turns. And it's a yellow trap. I don't know what that does. Uh, the traps are kind of the color. They're color coded, but the, the colors get randomized every uh, time you start a new game. So uh, keep that in mind. So red traps destroy things. Um, white traps uh, recharge a uh, random item. Purple traps slow you, and this is an orange. Kind of waiting for the speed to wear off. Or not. Got infected again. Sweet. Now what's orange do? It makes me blind. Okay, the disease wore off, but I can't see anything, so I'm kinda... I think there's a pass... What key makes me pass turns? Gameplay. Skip turn X. Okay. I'm using up food because I'm waiting, but I can't see, so... I mean, I can use the map to help me a little, but it, it's better just to let it wear off. There we go. And let's not go that way, just in case the trap activates again. Oh, hello. I am poisoned. Poison will debuff you and it has a chance of doing, um... You take damage every turn. Well, since I'm poisoned anyway, I'll go ahead and use that. Okay, killed you. Poison more off. This is a ruined freezer, can't do anything with it. This is a light weapon blocker. Requires a mechanical skill, 83% chance of success. Awesome, got it. So, skill increases, and we got ourselves a weapon mod. Now, the thing about weapon mods is, um, kind of like the traps here, um, these are randomized a little bit. Um, they will either give you a good thing or a bad thing. Um, usually they're supposed to give you good things, but when I find an actual uh, another weapon, I'll try using it. Because I can't really afford <laughs> jacking up my pistol. I think this is just for a weapon, yeah. Um, items have a number of slots for uh, mods. So I have two slots for my flak jacket and two slots with the auto pistol and none for the dura knife. So uh, yeah, I'll hold on to that mod for now. And there's the stairs down, we're not going to take it yet. Okay, looks like we found, okay, another yellow door. This is taking like five turns to open. And I failed it, wow, amazing. Uh, this requires 16%, uh, I have a 16% chance to drop the stasis field. I'm probably going to fail it. Yeah. So, can't do anything with that. And that's everything, so... Sometimes I try to hold off until I get a level up so I can have a little bit higher chance, but that was just bad luck. Um, so, not much I can do about that. Alright, got bone slivers. Those can be used for making lockpicks. 77% chance. Let's hope for the best. You gotta be kidding me. Really, game? And I'm interrupted. Another trophy. Okay, come on. Alright. Did I? Ooh, what's this? Oh, it's just a regular knife. Lame. Well, I'll take it anyway. Anyway, knife. Has uh, less penetration, same damage. That's about it. I mean, at least I have a spare knife now. Anyway, I think this video has gone on long enough, so let me go ahead and cut it off here. I am the Depressed Eeyore, and this was uh, Sword of the Stars, The Pit. See you guys later.